Well, you see Jackie and William at the competitions. You see them being fabulous and flash, jumping the jumps. But what happens here in this truck on the way to the competition can be win, lose or draw. And Jackie is the queen at managing that process. I think people sometimes underestimate what can go wrong and what can go right. Yeah, I mean, I think it's really important, even just the loading as well, and that they've got the right travel equipment on to travel safely mm -hmm. and how you load them and on the journey as well, is how they can win or lose a competition. They tend to travel very well. Do you travel them, which way round do you go? Their heads are at the front here mm -hmm. and then obviously bottoms at the side. Mm -hmm. And we travel them slightly on the left angle because they seem to naturally want to go that way. Mm -hmm. So they have their hay on the left so that they're not awkward and they're stiff in their necks when they arrive. A lot of people wouldn't travel with hay. They might think there would be a risk for choking or getting their yeah. feet in the hay net. Yeah, definitely. Um, but I think with the eventers, because we've started them off quite young and they may not have had a hay net when they first went so they got used to it gradually. You're always looking at ulcers as well. I actually travel mine nearly always with a hay net, particularly important for things like ulcers. You don't want to have an empty stomach for any length of time. And this is Oratorio who's a horse who I think exemplifies all of that. Well, he's transformed actually since we discovered he had ulcers. He was First of all, not looking great, and our horses are fed well, and he was not looking the best. So he would get picky in the mornings and would look immediately to, to find his hay rather than haylage. I mean, you are working with horses every day, and you're so in tune with them, so you're picking up those signs. For other riders who perhaps pick up the signs, what, what should they do next? I mean, I think the ultimate thing to do is to, to do a gastroscope. You need to look inside. I think you can assume that you, you're right, but I think the only way to do it is to properly look medically. And you can see straight away, so you're knowing what you're dealing with, and it's good to know what degree they are. Then you're you know, no longer um, ignorance being bliss. I'm assuming, really, it's about stress management, isn't yeah. it? Yeah. When you're travelling, it's very easy to think that they're just having a nice... It's like us going, oh, we're going to the airport, it's great. Mm -hmm. A horse doesn't think that way. For them, travelling is really stressful. Mm -hmm. So as much as you can minimise any problems, the better. What do you do in terms of airflow versus getting cold and breezes on their neck? I'm a big believer in ventilation, and that's what rugs are for. Mm -hmm. I mean, we're so lucky nowadays that, you know, the rugs are brilliant, and we often have a neck cover on if they have a breeze at least their neck's not getting cold. Mm -hmm. I mean, they want to travel warm, but they don't want to be over warm. But then again, they don't want to be cold either. Mm -hmm. So we would check them probably nearly every half hour just to make sure that the temperature is good. It's good to go back and check because, God forbid, if you have one with colic on the way there or way back, mm -hmm. then at least you can see early on. Mm -hmm. Well, let's go and get one ready and see um, exactly what you put on because there's a good bit of fluff and faff, which I like. Yes, we do <laughs> like that. So what would be your basic kit? We've got a pile here. Yep. Well, we'd start off with our rug for suitable for the occasion. Mm -hmm. I mean, this is great actually because it's a bit of a sweat rug and it has a good covering on the back as well. Mm -hmm. So if it was very, very hot, then we wouldn't put a rug on them. Mm -hmm. So then where would you go next? Um, tail. So we like to take two tail bandages and if they're traveling to a show, you've washed them before, so you don't want to get them there and they're dirty. So we put one on the top and one down to the bottom. So it's quite easy to start off with the tail over your shoulder. And the top one, I quite like to do a little bit of a zigzag tail bandage so that it holds position. Because the thing about tail bandages as well is if you put them too tight, then you can damage the tail. Would there be a length of time that would be the maximum you'd like a tail bandage to be on? So if, for example, you're going, as you talked about, Yep. five, seven hours plus. We generally take the tail bandages off then mm -hmm. and then replace them. Mm -hmm. Because if you have had one put on too tight, you don't want it on any longer. Mm -hmm. And then the bottom one, I just take down in a normal roll and we leave a little, bo little bit at the end. Some people do like to plait their horse's tails on this part, but we're all for the straight tail, not the curly tail. So then we leave a little bit at the bottom and go back up. And when they finish the competition, we would only travel back with one tail bandage on. Because really you're just protecting the dock. Because some horses do tend to sit on their tails in the lorry. And to make sure that they have a little bit extra protection, we pop a tail guard on top. Mm -hmm. 
And would you ever just boy. travel them in the tail guard? Not I think it. sometimes, say, when you're flying, mm -hmm. then we would, because that's an awfully long time to have a tail bandage on. I mean, often they travel with nothing on their tail. You know, if you really wanted to have something, you'd have a tail guard. Right, so tail's protected. What yes. about those all-important legs? So these are really good. I like these with the bigger straps because you can get them tight enough, but they're not too tight on them and easy for removing as well. So these are great because they've got a little bit more protection at the bottom to cover the coronet band because what you don't want is them to, is to take a shoe off in the lower. So slightly different shaping for the front and back. Yep. And then the back ones go right up over the hock. Yeah, don't they? yeah because that's where they're going to bang themselves if they do. And actually for a young horse as well, they sometimes find this a little bit strange. So it's just good to be careful when you're putting them on because they may initially give a little kick out mm -hmm. or even when they walk off, some of them walk off as if their legs have been changed. Okay, so Good he's boy. all protected and ready to go. Yep. All right, able assistant, I've got the hay net. Oh, great, thank um, you. Do all horses jump on board as easy as that? Um, most of them do. I mean, sometimes you have to teach them about getting on the lorry because it's quite a strange thing for them. So um, you've got them in, what next? Yep. Um, we use these little bungees to clip them to. You which... always have them attached to a piece of string though, don't Always, you? yes. Because if they did have a problem and panic, you want that to be able to snap so that they don't damage themselves. Mm -hmm. Nice hay net for him. So what are the really important things to remember about the hay net? You need to make sure that they're tied securely mm -hmm. and up high enough. I tend to like to put them here. I think it's a more natural position for them. So I like to do a normal slip release knot, but then pop it through and turn okay. it round. And then you always put bedding in? Yes, because it's good for the horse to be able to stay along the way. It's a little bit like us. If you're dying to go to the loo, you don't want to go jumping over hurdles. Mm -hmm. And you keep it quite compressed, don't you, down the middle so that it's easy to, to muck yeah. out the back? Yeah, because when we're at an event and the horses come off, we'll always try and skip out as well just to cut the ammonia down mm -hmm. and just keep it nicer for the horse. And you just throw that in, cut the ammonia down, but that is something you're very aware of, isn't it? Because the horses yeah. we can have quite a strong ammonia spell yeah, so it's very much really important to keep the vehicle you travel your horses in really clean yeah you know if we've been to a sh an event and we've traveled four or five hours there and back we'd often power hose it out after as well all these things can just add those tiny marginal gains yeah. ultimately yeah, to the, the performance that matter. and crunchy we want you winning well Will, we've been talking to jackie about the program that you and her have developed to travel these beautiful horses all over the world, all over the country. What, what for you are the priorities for international travel, which for a lot of people is not really going to be that relevant, but still it's interesting to find out how do you do it? How do you manage it? You still got to uh, travel them as an animal in comfort. So we like to get our horses on and off the lorry. We don't like them to be on the lorry for 10, what, eight, even five hours. We like the horses to be traveling in comfort and when they get there, you assess the horse. Has he eaten? Has he drunk? Is he dehydrated? Assess him, how is he feeling? But yeah, when you're traveling all the way to places like Hong Kong, you've got a horse that's been stuck in a crate for goodness knows how many hours. It's totally foreign to him and you've just got to treat them accordingly when you get there. Well, there's so many things. We think that managing horses is simple, but when you talk to you guys, as we said to Jackie, it's a, it's a really interesting yeah. area and an area that can be relevant for both the guys who are just popping to the local show, but also for you, the big guns. Um, and it really is something that can affect the performance and the happiness and health of your horses.